Okay. Welcome to GUI and email browsers for 6th of October, I've been told. Um, uh, yep. So this week we got a short uh, show and tell section where we'll be um, highlighting some changes that landed in web UI and uh, are going to land in uh, Go IPFS and all around the GUI stuff. Uh, so the first one is web UI 2.11.2, which landed with context menus and improved uh, text file previews. Uh, Rafael, do you got that locally or should I like share my screen? Oh, I don't have it locally right now. Do you have That's it fine. if you have it? Yeah, 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 so. I, I, I can share it one second. Yeah. So here we, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. It should be a web UI. So this is what my test folder in web UI when I have interesting files. Um, so uh, web UI 2.11.2 um, soon to be shipped and even improved with IPFS desktop, but for now uh, it restores uh, context menus on directories and breadcrumbs. So here you can right click and you got the full context menu here. Same here on the directory, the context menu is here. And I believe the, the kind of cool thing is that we've improved text file preview. So there was a bug where you were not able to preview file. You had to download it through this button. Uh, now you can see entire file if it's small enough, right? So this is a small text file and you can see the entire file. However, here I got uh, one of works of uh, Tolstoy and uh, it's a three megabyte of plain text. And you can see by the scroll bar, <laughs> like it's long, but then it's not even like entire thing. So this is the improvement we've did. Uh, you may have really, really big text files. And this has a, a, a practical, uh, a practical uh, use because people may store or share uh, log files or other stuff, or type of text uh, append only data where it's really, really big, like hundreds of megabytes of gigabytes. And we don't want to load the entire text file to the browser to preview it in, in a web UI. So now we fetch only the first block which is uh, 256 kilobytes, I believe. And then you have this option to either load, load more or download the entire thing. So if you, you initialize download, then you download it and save it to the disk. You can also load the next block uh, and it will uh, load the next block and you can resume uh, and do that until you read the entire file. Uh, so that's the main improvement, uh, the, the key uh, the key idea here is to avoid loading too much into the browser. Uh, we don't want to uh, degrade performance. Uh, if people are running web UI on uh, like older like Raspberry Pis uh, and other environments. Um, so I you, you can drag and, yeah, sorry, you can drag and drop images as well now in uh, JSON and oh. text will not be. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is a, yet another thing. So like the drag and drop worked b before you can like drag to pets, go to pets. And then uh, the file is here, right? And you can drag like this. The improvement now is that you can, I believe, drag this image, right? Yes. Into like pets <laughs> and it, it works. Yeah, so that's also cool. So like a bunch of like small, nebula. which make it more intuitive to work with stuff. Um, I guess that's the highlight uh, for this. Uh, there is an upcoming improvement for the way uh, HTTP gateways uh, present the directories in HTML form. Uh, so um, maybe I will, Maybe I'll just kind of like show, this is a uh, directory listing for our dist IPFSIO website, which has a DNS link. 
Uh, it's loaded from a local gateway, but if you use a DNS link, uh, the address would look like this <laughs> without the gateway suffix. Um, so the improvements which we landed uh, previously were the breadcrumbs and the CID column and uh, upcoming fixes are that those breadcrumbs will work even if you use DNS link. So even if you have the root at the URL root, those links will work fine. And uh, the CID column uh, in the past, it just pointed at the raw, raw CID. Now it will have a file name preserved. So if you download it, the file name uh, will be prefilled in save as dialog in your uh, system. And if you are displaying this screen on the NSLink website, which probably does not have a public gateway mounted, if you are using your own domain, you generally don't want to have uh, people uh, being able to load arbitrary content under your own origin. So in that context, we kind of changed the behavior of CID column instead of pointing at the public gateway. We did not want to favoritize uh, some one canonical gateways, uh, a gateway we decided to point at CID IPFS IO uh, utility, which explains the meaning behind CID. Uh, so that's a UX improvement on this front. And the third item, which, Oh, it's also mine, so I can probably show it as well. Uh, we we did uh, we did an overhaul of how IPFS desktops uh, CI and CD uh, works. And long story short is that we've uh, switched to GitHub Actions for both macOS and Windows and Linux uh, builds. And now there's a single CI pipeline which uh, builds. Uh, artifacts for every PR, or every push and every PR. And when it's a release, it also attaches uh, those uh, built and signed and notarized in the case of Apple um, packages to GitHub release. So maybe as an illustration, if we want to see the latest build for the master branch, you can see it run for first it runs tests against Mac, Linux and Windows. And if tests pass, then uh, it, and only then it will build the packages because that's expensive. Um, and here everything is green. So packages were built and after a successful build packages are attached to the job. So it's pretty useful for testing. We are no longer, you, we no longer need to uh, check out the the branch and build locally, we have a build for a specific commit attached to the uh, GitHub action that uh, was responsible for testing and building stuff. Uh, those are zip files. That's the limitation of GitHub. It zips all the artifacts. So even if I uh, created a zip per file, it would still be <laughs> zipped. So it's a single zip for Windows, for Linux, and for Mac OS for now. Uh, but it's pretty useful to be able to uh, quickly test uh, installation package for a commit. Um, we sign them for master and for our internal uh, branches. Uh, branches, uh, builds created from forks they still build stuff and they still create artifacts, but those artifacts are not signed. Uh, so that's uh, something to be aware if there's an error, like uh, a Mac security error or a Windows error, when you test a PR from a contributor, that means it's fine. It's just like we don't expose secrets uh, for uh, builds that were triggered by people other than internal collaborators. Uh, so I think that's a, a pretty good trade-off between what we had before uh, and what we have, uh, what we want to have, uh, with uh, uh, like with addressing uh, the security concern of uh, signing a code that we did not approve. <laughs> so uh, the value here, the main value here is that we see if a build breaks we are able to detect, let's say, Windows problems sooner than on the release date. In the past, 
uh, the final build happened only when we tag the release and the build run for a tag. Now we effectively do the entire pipeline on every commit. Uh, so I think that will remove surprises. And if there are any surprises, it, we will have an early warning system. Um, I think that's it on my end. It's pretty exciting that we removed dependency of external uh, CI providers and now like <laughs> at least we are relying on GitHub, which is like one external uh, company instead of four, um, which is pretty good, pretty, pretty good uh, security wise. Uh, I plan to do similar thing for companion this quarter. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, later this week, we should be releasing IPFS desktop 0.13 with uh, Go IPFS uh, 0.7 and the new web UI, which has a fix that was not present in, in the latest release, but we will also release that later this week. Uh, it's improved file import feedback, which also has a bug fix, uh, but I'm mostly excited about uh, file import feedback. I know that you actually shared uh, the video, but maybe um, said video is for the progress bar. Not yeah. The... So I think uh, I I got a copy here, so maybe I'll share my screen again and go over it. Maybe easier. All right. So let's say I want to import a folder of insane cats. I totally had this prepared. So uh, I want to import it. And you can see I had this short spinner here, which told me that something's happening. And it was bothering me before because my, like, I have a very slow laptop and it takes time for importing even smaller files and nothing happened. And now something happens uh, and after things happens, we see that we've imported one item. Uh, I believe uh, that's more or less it. Uh, there was a bug when uh, instead of a number here, we had um, no, and not a number error, uh, which will uh, which blocked uh, IPFS desktop release, but that will land this week. So I'm pretty excited on that. And I believe the web UI, which I was showing you all this time, already has this uh, fix by Jessica to accommodate smaller viewports. Uh, and on the status, we, yeah, we got the version. Yeah, of there's an Easter egg. That is thanks to contributor Bertrand. You cannot blame me for wanting to. Uh, he raised both the issues in PR and an initial fix to include the UI version. It's also in not only in the status screen, if you look at the very bottom of the left nav, it's there as well. Oh, that's super cool. Thanks for that contribution, Bertrand. Oh, awesome. All right. See, that's what I get for having a working copy of web UI. I need to demo all the stuff. <laughs> all right, folks. Um, that's the stuff I had on the agenda. Are there any topics you want to uh, bring up? Perhaps. Or it's just top secret that we need to discuss after I end the, this recording, right? It's just top secret stuff. Okay. Proceed to the top secret. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I was hoping we will demo IPFS desktop, but we got derailed and it will happen probably later today, but that means uh, we'll demo that in two weeks. So this week's one, it was pretty short, but stay tuned. See you in two weeks. <laughs>